Okay, chapter six, algebra one, review. Question number one. 4x minus 2y equals negative 14, and 3x minus y equals negative 8. I want you to solve it using any method. Go. Okay, those of you who used elimination, what did you choose to eliminate? Which variable? Chris, the y. Okay, so once you've decided which variable to eliminate, look at the top one and go, or ask yourself, what's going to eliminate a negative 2y? A positive 2y. So my question is, how do I make this bottom turn into a positive 2y? Cameron. Perfect. He multiplies everything on the bottom by negative 2. I want you to get these steps because I have a lot of you that are skipping steps at this point. Okay. To the right-hand side of your equation, you did not change anything on the top, so leave it the same. You did change on the bottom, and you have to be very careful. I was tutoring this morning, and I completely forgot to multiply all the way through. Okay, everybody makes that mistake. Slow down. Make sure you multiply every term by negative 2. So that gives me a negative 6x, a positive 2y, and a positive 16. Okay, how many got to that stage? All right, most of you. Okay. Now, what happens to the two y's? They cancel. What is 4x minus 2x? Negative 2x. And negative 14 plus 16. Anybody? Two. One step to go. What do I do? Divide by negative 2. And what does x equal? Negative 1. How many had x equals negative 1? Good. That's a pretty good number. Now, what do I do with that negative 1? Chris, which one? Either one of the original equations. In this case, I always like to look and see, is there an equation that doesn't have negative signs in it? In this case, there's not. So I'd pick either one. I'm going to go with the top one. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative 1. So what's 4 times negative 1? Negative 4. Now we have a multi-step equation. Madison, what's my next step? Add 4 to both sides. Perfect. Addie, what's negative 14 plus 4? Negative 10. Michael, finish it off. 5 by negative 2 on both sides. My final answer is y equals what? 5. So my coordinate is negative 1, 5. How many got that? Excellent. That's a good number. Okay. Let's go to another one. Okay. If you see a problem that's got decimals in it, get rid of the decimals right away before you do anything. What can I multiply the top one by to get rid of those decimals? Two? two? Ten. Mm, ten. Because remember when we multiply by tens or hundreds or thousands, it moves the decimal place one, two, or three places. So if I multiply this top thing by ten... It's actually going to move the decimal over how many places? One to the right. So this is going to become 5x plus 5y equals negative 20. It's the exact same equation. I just moved the decimal over one place on each one of them. So now on the bottom, because I have 25 hundredths, what am I going to have to multiply everything by? Do what? Four, not four. What? How about a hundred? Okay. Okay. Actually, when actually when you say four, four would work, but I'm going to stick with this one just because of the decimal places. Because if I multiplied 0.25 by four, that would be one. 
but I'm going to stick with the 100. Yes, sir. It would have, yeah. But I'm, I'm just going decimal places. I agree. Two would have worked. So we've got 100x minus, what's 100 times 0 0.25? 25. 25. And then 100 times 6 is 600. Now, that looks crazy, but I promise you it'll all work out in the end. So now, that's what we're used to seeing. So let's look. I'm going to make this elimination. What are we going to eliminate? What looks easiest? Y. I like the y's because one of them is positive and one of them is negative already. What's the common factor between the, the 5 and the 25? Five. The, uh, let me rewind say it again. What's the common multiple between 5 and 25? 25. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Olivia, what are we going to multiply the top by? Five. All right. So we go through on this. Again, do the same steps. Write every step. Do it the same way. That gives me 25x plus 25y equals negative 100. And in this case, did I change the bottom at all? No. So underneath it, I put 100x minus 25y equals 600. And now I just do what it tells me to do. 25y plus 100y is how, or x, excuse me, is 125x. The y's cancel. Negative 100 plus 600, 500. And when I divide, vote, divide both sides by 125, bless you. What do I come up with? Four. Okay. How many had x equals four? Good. That's a great number. Okay. Now go back into, here's, here's the deal. You can go back and put it into the originals with the decimals. I wouldn't, but you could. Okay. Or you can put it into the ones that you changed. Because you have to understand, these are the exact same equations. They're just multiplied through by a factor. Okay, I'm going to put it in this first one. So I've got 5 times 4 plus 5y equals negative 20. That gives me 20 plus 5y equals negative 20. Um, Jared. Subtract 20 from both sides. Divide by 5. What is y equal? Negative 8. So I've got 4, negative 8. How many got that answer? Man, we're killing these. Good job. Okay. Now, let's change the look a little bit. Let me throw something that, that may intimidate you tomorrow, but I don't want it to, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you today. Now, there's no fractions. The only, the only crazy difference was that decimal one. You won't see any fractions. Okay, there's a little different twist, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause, let you chew on that for a little bit, all right, here we go, let's just realign it first before we do any solving, so, um, Mason, what would you do first, or what did you do first? <clears throat> Ah, you just, you stared at it. Okay, and hoped it solved itself. Man, these problems are just not solving themselves. Michael, what'd you do first? Uh, I moved the y over to the other side and made it negative y. On the bottom one? The bottom one. Okay, so you made it 5x minus y equals 8. How many of you did that? Okay. Some of you did different methods. That's okay. All right. Now, what I would do on the top one, because if I bring over y minus 3x equals negative 24, my x's and y's are not going to be lined up. So I just switch the order. 
I put my minus 3x first, I put my positive y second, and I put my negative 24. Now, for those of you who may have done a different method, hold on, let's get to the answer and we'll see if we come up with the same thing because this is not the only way to do it, okay? In this case, something great just happened, okay? Alexandra, what just happened? Magnificent. They line up and you can eliminate the y's. I got a plus y, I got a minus y. I don't have to change anything, okay? So, <clears throat> negative 3x plus 5x. Anybody? Positive 2x. Negative 24 plus 8. Anybody? Negative 16. Divide both sides by 2. X equals negative 8. How many got X equals negative 8? How many got X equals negative 8 and you used a different method than I did? Perfect. Again, just to show you, it can be done. All right? Now, take your pick. Um, I like the bottom one because it doesn't have any negatives. Okay? So I'm going to take 5 times negative 8 equals y plus 8. So that gives me negative 40. I can't write today. Negative 40 equals y plus 8. To get the y by itself, I want to subtract 8 from both sides. And y, as crazy as it looks, is negative 48. How many got that? Awesome. Okay. So the answer is negative 8. Wait. Yeah. Negative 8. Let's make sure I got that in the right order. Negative 48. This is one of the problems where you will love yourself for not choosing graphing. Okay, because if you had to graph that thing, your graph would be a page long to get to 48, negative 48. Okay. Okay, so we're going to graph two inequalities. Y is greater than X minus 4. And 2X plus Y is less than or equal to 2. Three points of emphasis. Lines in the right place. Lines uh, drawn correctly, dashed or solid. And lines shaded in the right direction. Ready, go. Okay, let's go ahead and get some information on these two lines. Again, we've, uh, or I've already manipulated the second one to be in y equals mx plus b form. So what's the y-intercept of the first one? Trajan. So the y-intercept? Yep. Negative 4. Perfect. Okay, and staying with Trajan, what's the slope? Shh. Huh? What's the number in front of the x? Right, but what's the understood number in front of the x? 1. So how do I write that as slope? 1 over 1. Perfect. Okay. Um, Cole, what's the y-intercept of the second one? 2. Courtney, what's the slope of the f second one? Negative 2 over 1. Excellent. Okay, so let's take a second to graph the first one. I've got a y-intercept of negative 4. And I have a slope of up 1 to the right 1. All right. Solid or dashed line? Solid. Dashed. Okay, dashed line. <clears throat> Um, what did I do? Oh, that one's way off. I'm just going to go with three. Okay, dash line. Okay, now let's look at the shading. I'm going to go with... Um, I don't want to go with yellow yet. I'm going to pick my point zero, 0, Here it is. Plug it into my equation. Is 0 greater than negative 4? Yes. So I am going to shade in the region 
that includes the zero. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best you can. So now I'm going to go to my second line, and I have a y-intercept of positive 2, which is here. And I have a slope of down 2 to the right 1. Solid or dashed line? Solid. Solid. Chris, question? Say that one more time. You have to make it obvious to me. Like circle, circle it. Make sure it's way darker. Do it in a different color. What, whatever the case. Whatever you have to do. Yeah. It just just make it look different than the other two areas. Okay. You're going to have three shaded areas. Okay. One line is going to go off one direction. One line is going to go off another direction, and then the third shaded area is going to be where they come together. You have to signify somehow in a darker color, squigglies, circle, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, so my zero, zero is still on there, so I'm going to use it, and I've got uh, zero plus zero is, that's not a trick question, zero plus zero? Zero is less than or equal to two. I'm going to make your parents watch the screencast so they can hear that tonight. I love you, Mommy. Uh-huh. Zero is less than two. Is that true? Is zero less than or equal to two? Yes. yes. So, again, my magical colors. I cover up the zero. And I go all the way down the line that I have. Again, that's just my personal preference. Some of you will stop. Okay. And I know that my shaded region that overlaps is in here. It can't go on the other side of that one. And it can't go on the other side of there. So there is my shaded region. All of my solutions fall in that region. Okay.